I won't be long before you tonight. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to 1 Peter 3.15. And while you're doing that, I'd like to stop and give honor to my pastor, Pastor Blankenship and his wife, our associate pastor, Pastor Bimbry, and his wife and their family. Appreciate them so much. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and get started. 1 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. i just like to share an encouraging thought tonight called being on call. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we've heard it before said that when a person is in the medical field, when they're asked to be available upon any time they're called, it's called being on call. Meaning, even after their scheduled hours of work, they can be expected to respond should an occasion arise. Whether it be in the middle of the night or even if it interrupts their favorite football game, they can be expected to respond immediately to a situation. This to me parallels what we as Christians are to do. Our text states right there inside this verse, be ready always. The relationship that I have with God is to not only benefit me. I'm thankful for the salvation that the Lord has given me, but I'm not meant to sit on it. The salvation that the Lord has given me is also to go out and to share to other people the message of Christ. As a Christian, we are to be on call. I'm a children's church teacher, and according to the schedule that I get each and every week, I'm scheduled every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. to minister to children. But my job does not end as soon as the last child goes home. It doesn't end as soon as we lock on the doors. No, even after my hours of being a children's church teacher on that particular day, I'm on call. When the Lord moves upon my heart during the week to get down and to pray for these children that I see for a matter of two hours or three hours, I'm all call. I'm praying because the Lord says, Chanel, I have a destiny for them. When I see them passing throughout the week, whether it be at the store or at their schools, I have to make sure that I am encouraging them in the Lord because maybe, just maybe, I could share something that can change their life because I'm a saint of God. I am on call. Is this making sense to anybody tonight? Church, we need to be sure that we keep our hearts for God and that we stay on fire, dwelling always in his word, dwelling always in his spirit, because you never know when he's going to be in need of a saint to be available at an inopportune time to respond on his behalf. We need to be on call. We need to have our testimonies on call. We need to have our worship on call. I'm on an inspirational high because I love so much the testimony that Brother Mason Wan shared about praying that security guard through to the Holy Ghost. It would have, if he wasn't on call, he would have missed it. Or he could have easily said to that person, well, that's wonderful that you need the Holy Ghost, but my hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sundays only, so you're going to have to come back before then. No, he was ready. He was on call. And because of that, a man's life was forever changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My message isn't long tonight, but I'm going to conclude with what Mark 16, 15 says. The word says, and he said unto them, go ye unto all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. All the world. That's a lot of people. That's more than what we see in our city. That's more than what we see in our state. That's more than what's in our own country. All the world. And it's going to take every single saint to accomplish it. So church, I encourage you, let's be ready. Let's stay prepared. Be on called in Jesus' name. <laughs>